Every web dev is probably capable of adding a basic login or sign up form to their web application. But how would you go about implementing things like forgot password or allowing a user to sign up with a social provider or their cell phone number or adding two factor auth with an authenticator app? What about basic user management features like being able to block or suspend certain users? There are so many things surrounding user auth and user management that can be difficult and time consuming to implement in a web app. But as a developer, you don't need to worry about implementing any of these things things if you just use an auth service, like Kind, the sponsor of this video. So I'm going to show you how to set up Kind to add user auth to your Next.js applications so you can protect your server actions, pages, and your API routes. And we're going to add user auth to this basic GPT chat app that I built in a separate video. So I could ask it to add user auth to a Next app using Kind. And you don't need to have watched the previous videos where I set this up because we're just gonna focus on adding Kind to this app right now. So at the end of this video, Kind will be implemented. So if we go to the app, we won't see any of the previous chats because I'm not logged in. And then as soon as I go to log in, either using an email or a social provider, I'll be able to get a custom experience and actually see my own chats here that I've made. So we're gonna start by going to kind.com and you can click start for free if you don't have an account already, but I'm just gonna log into my existing account here. And for every unique application you make, you'll just add a new business for that application. So I'm calling this thing code GPT, so that's good. And I'm gonna set up my region to be USA because that is the closest to where I am. And then I'm gonna select that business. Then you can start from scratch, but I'm adding this to an existing code base. So click next, select the framework you're using. We're using next. And then we can select how we want the users to log in. And you can always change this later. I think I'm gonna have email and GitHub as options for mine and then click next. And then here I'm gonna click connect to get to the quick start guide where I can copy in all the environment variables I need. So I'm just gonna Going to come in here, select that, go over to my environment variables and paste all of those in. So this is the ID, the secret, the URL of my actual kind app and the URL of my next app, which is currently just localhost 3000. Uh, this redirect URL, I'm actually gonna redirect straight to the home page if a user signs out, but I could have them go to a different page using that environment variable. Then I also need to install the Next.js library. So bun add that. And then it has some quick start instructions here, but I'm actually gonna go over to the Next.js documentation because I find that to be a little bit more thorough and contain pretty much everything you'll need to get this set up in your application. So I'm in SDK version two because I'm using Next.js 14 and the app router. And then we're just gonna follow some of the instructions here. So if we scroll down, one of the first things we need to do is set up the kind auth router handlers. So I'm gonna go into my app, into the app directory and create a new path here which will be API auth and then kind auth in square brackets. So anytime that kind needs to deal with an HTTP request, it's gonna use this route. Uh, and then we just need a route.ts with this code in it. So I'll create a file route.ts and just dump that in there. And that's all we need for the setup of the API routes. So then I'm gonna scroll down and I think this is all the code I need right now. So immediately I'm gonna add a sign in and sign up link to my application. If I look at the app over here, I have this sidebar that shows me all the chats I have and then I have this little chat bar at the bottom. I'm just gonna put my user profile stuff in the bottom left corner over here. So if I go to this chat list component, this is a server component, then I am gonna import those links. Oh, let's see, we got register and login and I'm gonna throw these into the bottom of that left bar over here. So I have all these links here. I'm just gonna make another div. And if we justify between and set the height full, then I should be able to flex over here too. Should be able to throw these links in here and these should always appear in the bottom left of the bar. There we go, we got sign in and sign up. So. Right now, immediately, I should just be able to go in and sign up as a user. And I'm allowing users to sign up with their email address or their GitHub account. I'm gonna go with the normal login here with my email address. 
And this immediately sends me an email for a verification code. So I'm gonna log into my email provider in a different window. And this is the code that was emailed to me. I can paste that in and that will log me in. And a really cool thing is that by default, it doesn't deal with passwords. So anytime we go to log in, it will email us a code. And there's a post they have about this where they say why they default to not using passwords. And if you really want passwords, you can enable that feature, but by default, it just deals with these codes and you can read more on their website about why that's a better solution. But I'm gonna go back over to my application now because I should be signed in. So I'm gonna grab that other bit of code and we are gonna see if we can get the currently logged in user's information. So this is actually code that will go into my component. I'm gonna put that at the top of my component right now. And then I need to import this. So we'll grab this line of code and I'm gonna put this underneath the links. So basically when I try loading this server component, we're just gonna try and get the user object. So if they're logged in, it's a kind user, otherwise it's null. Let's log this out and see what we get. So we'll refresh the page and then over in terminal, I should be able to see there are the user details. So I have my name that I input, my email address, a unique ID for this user, uh, and I can use all of these bits of information anywhere in my application. But I'm gonna go back and I'm just gonna make sure these links don't appear if I'm not logged in. So if there is no user, then we will display these links. And actually, we should add a logout link here, logout link. If there's a user, let's change this up a bit. If there's a user, we'll display the logout link, log out, flip that, and otherwise, we'll allow the user to sign in or sign up. All right, so because I'm logged in, I see this logout, and actually let's display a little bit more information. Let's see, here are all the options we have. Email, family name, given name, ID. Let's go given name. And if I'd logged in with my GitHub account, I'd also be able to see like my GitHub profile picture. Let's actually throw this in the same div. So if I'm logged in, I get a different experience there. I get my name and a logout button. Then if I click log out, I have the options to sign in or sign up. And if I actually go over to the kind dashboard here and go back to the home of this application that I built, I'll be able to see I have one user in here. And if I go into the users section, I can see the user details and I have options to actually manage this user. So I could suspend this user, delete the user. Actually, I could just view this profile, I could change details if I needed to. So this is a really nice dashboard to be able to manage the users from. But let's go back to the app and do some more with Kind. So in this application, when I enter a message in here and submit that, it will create a new chat for that user. So I have this create chat function as a server action here. And I am going to bring in the same function I used over here. So get kind service session, paste that in. And again, I'm gonna get the currently logged in user. So if I try and create a new chat, if I'm not logged in, I immediately want to probably throw an error or at least return down an error in a server action. So I'll say return error, not logged in. So I can protect this action and only allow a logged in user to create a new chat. And then when I go to create a new chat, I want to associate that with a user. And I'm using a SQL database here. So if I go to my chat schema, I need to add another column that is the user ID. So this is gonna be a text column because if we look at that user ID, it's a string. So I'll add that in here as user ID. We'll make sure it's not null. You can't create this unless you're logged in. And then another thing I wanna do because I'll probably be selecting chats based on the user ID is that I would wanna add this as an index. And because I'm using Drizzle, the syntax for that looks like this where I'm gonna create that index for the user ID. So now I can close that and because that is required, my app is yelling at me, hey, you haven't provided a user ID, that's fine. Let's provide a user ID. That is gonna be user.id coming from kind right there. So that's all I need to do to be able to associate something in my database with the currently logged in user. So this is the action that will create the chat and associate the user with that chat. Then when the user submits a new message into the chat, that is going through an API route over here here. So the user will submit a new message and provide the chat ID that the message belongs to. So I need to make sure that the chat actually belongs to the current user. Check the 
chat belongs to the currently logged in user because if you're not part of that chat, then you shouldn't be able to create a message for it. So I'm gonna import the same thing up here and again, get the user. Now, if the user isn't logged in, I don't want them to be able to do anything. So I'm gonna immediately respond with not logged in status of 400 or maybe a 401. Then if they are logged in, we wanna make sure that there is a chat ID. And then here I'm already selecting the chat from the database to make sure that it exists. Let's also make sure that the chat belongs to the current user. So the where clause is gonna check for the chat ID, but also it's gonna check that the user ID is equal to the currently logged in user's ID. So the new select statement looks like that, and this will verify that the chat exists and belongs to the currently logged in user. And that should be enough to allow the currently logged in user to create new chats and messages. I just need to update my database schema. And now let's try creating a new message. So write me a TS function. Let's see what happens. So it creates a new chat. It creates new messages for that chat. And if I check in the database, I had no chats and no messages. But if I refresh, I should now have a new chat. And the user ID is that kind user ID for the currently logged in user. So let's go back to the app. I can see here's the chat. I can load that in. But if I open the app in, an incognito window, anyone is able to see the chats. They are basically global to all users. So the next thing I wanna do is only show the currently logged in users chats. So if I go back to this chat list component, I'm selecting the chats here. Really, I just need to change this query so that it accepts a user ID. And then we're gonna only select from the chat table where the chat's user ID is equal to the currently logged in user ID. I just need to import that EQ from Drizzle ORM. And then I can pass in that user.id here again. But I guess I should only really do that if the user is logged in. So maybe chats, if the user's logged in, will get the chats. Otherwise, I'll just give it an empty array. That way it will load nothing. So if I go back, I'm logged in. If I refresh the page, I can see there's my chats that I own, but in an incognito window, I should be able to see nothing because I'm not logged in, but I do have the ability to sign in or sign up. And if I were to try and create a new chat here and send that off, because I'm not logged in, it gave me an error message. I've just set up my error handling to use alerts right now. So I'm gonna close that window again, and I'm gonna go back to the docs just so you can see everything that you have access to here. So from the server session, we are able to get a whole bunch of information about the users. And if you start using Kind More, I suggest you check out all the different features that you get access to. If you keep scrolling down, there's a bunch of code examples that you're able to use, like redirecting. So if you had a profile page, for example, and a user wasn't logged in and you just wanted to redirect them to the login page, you can use this code snippet. There's examples of using middleware and a whole bunch of other things. And the main reason I love using Kind for my user auth is because you can do all of this server-side in a Next.js app. You are able to also grab user data from client components, but by default, you can just get everything using server components. And this is actually the main reason I switched to using Kind because I used to use Clerk. And if I look at their documentation, they have this provider client component that you need to wrap your entire application with. And the huge downside to this is that you're opted into dynamic rendering for every component that needs to access user information. So if you're trying to use the most modern Next.js features and you're trying to make sure your app is ready for things like partial pre-rendering, by using Kind, you get to do all of this on the server without being forced into dynamically rendering pages and components that you don't want to. And that's it for this video on getting set up using Kind in your Next.js application. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment and let me know if there's any other Kind features that you want me to cover in another video.